السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Dear students, today, inshallah, we are going to start talking about sympathetics, their main sorts of action and mechanism of action of alpha blockers. Sympathetics are those drugs that can antagonize the effect of sympathetic nervous system. This is there are two classes of these drugs: drugs that inhibit more adrenergic transmission and adrenergic receptor blockers. Uh, the, uh, to remember the first one, uh, first class, which is the drug that inhibit adrenergic uh, transmission, you have to remember the uh, noradrenergic neurotransmission and synthesis of norepinephrine. If you remember, tyrosine uh, is converted uh, into dopa and dopa into dopamine and you know, to dopamine to norepinephrine, which is stored in the vesicle, then released, right? So let's take it one step by step. So tyrosine into dopa, uh, the enzyme tyrosine hydroxylase is inhibited by the drug metyrosine. Uh, the second step from dopa to dopamine, uh, and this is inhibited by the drug alpha methyl dopa. Then the storage of a norepinephrine into the vesicle, okay, is inhibited by the drug Rizirp. Finally, this norepinephrine would need to be uh, released from the nerve ending, right? So guanidine and uh, pretelium uh, can inhibit the release of norepinephrine from the nerve ending. All of these drugs are used for treatment of hypertension. Uh, adrenergic receptor blockers are drugs that block the uh, alpha or beta receptors and prevent uh, adrenaline or noradrenaline from binding to these receptors. Uh, I think now we'll go to more details about these two classes. The class number one, the noradrenergic transmission blockers, includes uh, the uh, noradrenergic neuron blockers, drugs that inhibit the release. Of norepinephrine from the nerve terminals uh, such as guanitidine and bretillium. And the uh, next class is the uh, drugs that deplete norepinephrine from uh, noradrenergic nerve terminals uh, such as resilpine. Uh, this drug prevents the storage, if you remember, it blocks uh, carrier B, uh, uh, blocks the storage, prevents the storage of norepinephrine in the physical and make the uh, norepinephrine. Uh, is sub, uh, liable to the inactivation by uh, monoamine oxidase enzyme. Uh, then we talked about alpha methyl dopa is the drug that inhibits the synthesis of norepinephrine. Okay, remember from the step from dopa to dopamine, and this drug alpha methyl dopa is uh, one of the safest drugs in used to be used in pregnancy. All of these are antihypertensive drugs. Uh, the second major class is the noradrenergic receptor blockers, or simply they call them adrenergic receptor blockers. Uh, the, uh, for when, when we talk about receptors, adrenergic receptors, you have to remember there are two classes, alpha and beta. Okay, so the, again, there are classes that block both alpha and the beta. They are called mixed antagonists, such as labetalol, it inhibits alpha 1 and beta receptor. Okay, and it's effective in hypertension. Almost all of these drugs are effective in hypertension. Now we, we talked about alpha, mixed alpha, beta, antagonist. Now, talk about drug that inhibits only alpha, not beta. Uh, uh, these are further subdivided into uh, uh, non-selective alpha blockers, such as fentolamine and phenoxybenzamine, and as we will see later. Uh, these drugs are used in uh, tumor in the adrenal medulla, it's called fucromocytoma, uh, which produced a significant or increased amount from, uh, of catecholamines, uh, norepinephrine and epinephrine, uh, which is associated with severe hypertension. Uh, selective alpha-1 blockers, uh, such as prazosine, dexazosine, all of ocin uh, drugs, uh, again, used in treatment of hypertension, and selective alpha-2 blockers, such as UHMB. The last class is the beta blockers. Again, beta blockers, there are non selective beta blockers such as propranolol used in the treatment of hypertension, angina pectoris, cardiac uh, arrhythmia, 
and selective beta-1 blockers such as atenolol, acetylol, metoprolol, um, bisoprolol. Uh, these drugs are used as propranol, but they are more selective. So we know that there are beta-1 receptors in the heart, which is good. They are uh, selective, but they do not affect the beta-2 receptors uh, in the lung, which is a good advantage specifically for as asthmatic patients. Uh, then uh, selective beta-2 blockers such as butoxamine, this is not in clinical use. More into the receptor affinities, uh, they are, these are the three major classes of receptor uh, blockers. Alpha blockers, such as selective one, such as uh, prazosine, tirazosine, doxazosine, and non-selective ones, such as phenoxybenzamine and pentolamine, and then alpha-2 blockers such as euhimbine, and as we said before, lab, um, labitalol is a mixed antagonist that inhibits both alpha, alpha-1 specifically, and uh, beta receptors. Uh, then the beta agonists, beta antagonists, sorry, uh, these are either selective ones, such as metoprolol, acetylol, atenolol, uh, and so forth, and uh, the non-selective ones, such as propranolol, thymolol, vindolol. And finally, the butoxamine is uh, selective beta-2 blocker, which is not in clinical use. <clears throat> so the classes of uh, alpha blockers are uh, either non-selective or selective. Non-selective such as phenoxybenzamine, pentolamine, tolazolene, and ergot alkaloids. Uh, selective ones include the selective uh, one for selective alpha blockers for the alpha-1 receptor, such as this oocene family, prazosine, tirazosine, doxazosine, tamsulosine, and others, and the alpha-2 blockers such as UHB. So let's talk in details about adrenergic, alpha adrenergic blockers. Uh, they may be reversible or irreversible. This depends on the, uh, the nature of their binding with the alpha receptor. If they bind and dissociate, from the receptor, such as prazosine, these drugs are reversible and you can regain the effect again if you add uh, more of the agonists such as adrenaline or noradrenaline. Uh, the irreversible uh, alpha blockers, uh, they bind to the alpha receptor, but they do not dissociate. Mm -hmm. Or at least they will stay uh, bound to the receptor for a very long time. Okay, so if they are like that, a reversible one, you cannot overcome their effect. You cannot regain the receptor activity by adding more of the agonist. Uh, yeah, regarding the duration of the action, the duration of the action of reversible antagonist is easy, dependent on the T half and the rate at which the, receptor, the drug dissociates from the receptor. However, the uh, duration of action of the reversible antagonist will be very much prolonged. Okay, because that the drug may be cleared of the plasma within four hours, five hours, six hours, but the effect is still going on, going on, because of the, the drug is still bound to the receptor. Uh, to regain the activity of the receptor, the body has to just forget about that receptor and just synthesize new receptors. Uh, so finally, there is a comparison between a drug such as pentolamine, which is a reversible antagonist, and phenoxybenzamine uh, uh, as a reversible antagonist. So here, uh, the, this is the, on the x-axis, this is an uh, escalating dose of norepinephrine, and uh, on the y-axis, the tension uh, produced in isolated strips of cat spleen, which is rich in alpha receptors. Uh, here, the control, just the epinephrine alone, zero of phentolamine or of uh, phenoxybenzamine, so this is a normal sigmoid sigmoid curve expected from norepinephrine. Uh, if you add a little amount, about 10 micromole per liter of phentolamine, there will be inhibition of the effect of norepinephrine, okay, but you can still regain the Emax, the maximal efficacy. If you add more, the more there will be more inhibition, but again, you still can regain the efficacy or the Emax. However, here you cannot regain the efficacy because significant number of the receptors have been completely blocked. You forget about them, okay? So, and if you add more, you eat more receptors. So this is the nature of the irreversible antagonist. That's why it stays for a long time, the effect stays for a long time. 
And as we say, these two drugs are used in, in dealing with hypertension in uh, fucromocytoma patients. That's it for today. Uh, please enjoy. I say subhanallah wa alhamdulillah, subhanallah wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.